This video is brought to you by whokeys.com. You guys know the drill, you've just finished building your brand new PC, you boot it up and bam that hideous activate windows watermark appears. And the worst part is you forgot to budget $200 for an activation key from Microsoft because you spent it all on RGB, but that's okay. Because you don't need to spend $200, you can pick one up from today's video sponsor whokeys.com for a tenth of the price. The best part is you can use my code TT25 for 25% off, which takes this already cheap Windows 10 Pro key from $18 to $13. If you're in the UK like me, that's £11. You place your order, your activation code gets added to your orders page, you whack it into the Windows activation screen, and boom, you're fully activated, no more watermarks being burnt into your retinas. TT25 for 25% off, link in the description. So we hadn't actually heard of this brand before they messaged us about sending this case over to check out, but as soon as we saw pictures, we were like, yo, we gotta do a build in this and show you guys, cause it's just so different. And yes, it does look a bit like a fish tank. In fact, our good friend Justin from Robitech literally built an aquarium inside, it was awesome. We'll link his video down below in the description so you guys can check it out. But yeah, let's get straight into features. So it's got this three-piece panoramic glass so you can get a proper view of all your components, which I think looks amazing. I've not seen this design before, although it almost feels like an evolution of the very popular O11 dynamic from Lee and Lee. Lots of glass, although there's no corner pillar in the Y60, so it looks even better in my opinion. In terms of colours, you can get in black, there's also white, which is the one we have here, and there's even a red version. You don't often see many red cases around nowadays, so good news for any fans of red and black setups. Anyways, back to features. So it's got a dual compartment type design, again, a little bit like the O11 Dynamic, so your PSU chamber is separate from the main chamber. Keeps things looking a lot cleaner, in my opinion, and yes, you can fit a full-size power supply in here. It also supports full-size ATX motherboards, in fact, even EATX. It's a very roomy feeling case in general, although I wouldn't say it looks or feels overly big from the outside when you look at it on a desk, which I think is mostly owing to the design. Now this case was designed specifically for vertical GPU mounting. Obviously there is debate on performance versus the traditional horizontal mounting, we'll speak more about that later, but at least aesthetically I'd say it definitely looks better in my opinion. And like I said, it's been designed specifically with vertical mounting in mind, so they've put a lot more time into optimizing airflow for this kind of setup versus it just being an afterthought. In fact, you can see from this angle, there's decent space between the GPU fans and where the glass would be, so it's not gonna completely choke airflow versus say vertically mounting mountain and something like the NZXT H510 Elite. But yeah, stay tuned because we're going to talk temps later. Now obviously in order to vertically mount your GPU you're going to need a riser cable which they do include and it is PCI 4.0 as well so you don't need to go and buy one. It's also very premium looking, it has this shroud which covers where it plugs into your motherboard and the whole thing is secured in place by being attached to both the bottom of the case and to the PCI expansion slots. And the best part is the riser cable shroud is colour matched to the colour of the case you purchased. So if you bought the red one, the shroud will also be red. It's the small things. There's also three 120mm fans included, which is nice. Speaking of fans, the case supports up to eight of them. Two in the side, up to 140mm. Three at the top, up to 120mm. One 120mm in the rear. And two in the bottom, up to 140mm. Radiator support is up to 280mm in the side, up to 360mm at the top, and up to 120mm in the rear. Now the dust filter situation is quite interesting. The bottom one is removable, you just unlatch these clips and it pops straight off. The other dust filters, however, are built right into the case panel. So the side panel basically has one big dust filter attached to it, as does the top of the case as well. Now, as you can tell from the photos on the website, they definitely want you to do a water-cooled system in this. There's plenty of space and plenty of spots to mount fans and radiators. We did actually want to do a water-cooled build in this case, but we've been redoing our studio this past week and we just ran out of time and wanted to get this video out sooner rather than later. But yeah, as you can tell, there's tons of room, especially near this glass corner section for things like pump reservoirs. We're definitely gonna have to water cool this thing soon, so subscribe if you wanna see that. In terms of IO, it's all located at the bottom of the front corner. As you can see, you've got your power button in the center, which is surrounded by two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port on the right, and an audio mic jack on the left. Now, for those of you that still use HDDs, good news. You can fit up to two 3.5-inch drives in the rear section of the case or up to four 2.5-inch SSDs. You just slide out these little drive bays, which, if you look closely, are actually labeled. In fact, there's a few things that are labeled. I thought that was quite cool. 
All right, so here's a better look at the finished build. Let us know what you guys think to it down below in the comments. I think it looks awesome. Like I said, I can't wait to do a water-cooled build in here, especially with that glass corner pillar. You have a totally unobstructed view of all your components. Cable management was an absolute breeze. There's plenty of room in the rear chamber. So if you're one of those people that really can't be bothered to spend ages on cable management, yes, you can just stuff them all away and nobody will ever know. But there is also a bunch of tie-down points. So a few zip ties later and you'll have a fairly clean looking system. One thing I wasn't a huge fan of are these rubber grommets. Now, don't get me wrong, they look pretty clean, but I was finding they slipped out far too easily when trying to feed cables through them. And they're not easy to get back in either. I'm not sure if this is something to do with how flimsy they are. Maybe if they were a bit more rigid, they'd stay in better. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention it. Now, in terms of thermals, Height have designed this case with cooling performance as one of the key features. So let's check out some temps. All right, so we tested this system with both the glass panels on and off just to get an idea of how much of an impact that glass has on the vertically mounted GPU. So with the glass on, we have idles of 32 on the CPU and 50 on the GPU. Then under load, we got 65 on the CPU and 75 on the GPU. And now after removing both the side and front glass panels at idle, we were getting 32 on the CPU and 44 on the GPU. So a little bit cooler on the GPU there. Then under load, we had temperatures of 63 on the CPU and 71 on the GPU. So about four to five degrees difference there on the GPU with the glass on and one or two degrees on the CPU. So yeah, for a case with this much glass, I'm actually pretty impressed. I think they've done a good job in terms of airflow and cooling performance. And actually this was with 120 millimeter fans all around. You can do 140s in both the bottom and the side, which if you decide to do is going to get you even better performance. But I think for most people, it's going to offer more than adequate cooling for all your components, even with that vertically mounted GPU. But there we have it. It was super fun checking out this brand new case from Height. I almost feel like it could be the next O11 Dynamic in terms of popularity. I can see a lot of people wanting to get their hands on this case. I mean, it looks great. It's got a really interesting design, well thought out features, lots of space. Now the price is just shy of $200. It's definitely not a budget case, but I mean, it doesn't look like a budget case. It looks expensive, feels premium, and you do get the riser cable included as well. So all in all, I think you get what you pay for. But yeah, that'll do it for this video, guys. If you want to check out this case, we'll have it linked down below in the description. It's currently available for pre-order with shipping dates estimated in mid-April. If you enjoyed this video, a like rating would be much appreciated. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new. We've got some exciting videos coming up, including our full 2022 setup tour. And we're also building our personal rigs next week. So definitely make sure to come check it out. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest, you can catch us on our social media here and here. But with that being said, Thanks for watching today, guys. We'll catch you all in the next one.